Hola community, I have two things I want to share with you today. One of them is Chris Pencil updates related to the second thing, which is the workbench. What is the workbench? Well, it's also known as the viewport, the, the solid mode, or the wireframe mode that you use when you are working on your scene, where you're actually doing stuff. So solid mode, we know and love. It's been here forever, then recent, sort of recently, the wireframe mode where it came back. And it came back in the same way as in 2.7, where you have one color basically in, <laughs> to see all the meshes based on, on your theme. And you can also have, um, for example, you can now see through. This is a new setting from 2.8. You can select the object. So yeah, you, you can kind of work in here, but it's kind of hard to see because the when you have a, a mesh that is too dense or just the color of your background is a bit, no, it's not bright enough, then it's hard to see until now because you can now change from the shading panel up here, you can change the color of your wires. So by default, it's single. It, it basically, it could be renamed to theme because it, it is a theme. And then the object is a second setting where you can change the color of your object and your wireframes from the object properties in the viewport display panel. You just choose whatever color you want and the wireframe is gonna be displayed using that um, color. So it's already good enough for like uh, telling which objects to tell apart. I've been using it personally for like um, um, particle systems, like making rain, for example, and making a rain drop. And then you just want to see every everything white except the raindrops in like bright red or something, just to tell them apart. So that's already really one of the uses I've been using it. I've been also using it for um, for like making volumes because in solid mode, the object, for, for example, when you're previewing an object, you can change not only the color, but also you can change the alpha value of your mesh. So you can make them half transparent and see through and stuff. So look at that. You can have like a cloud of clouds. So I've been using it for volumes. That is pretty, pretty nice. The um, wireframe mode, for um, for example, you can see through with the X-ray or you can not see through if you want to. Um, without the uh, X-ray, you can have like a solid mode and just it's easier to, to find the meshes that way as well. The um, color you can set per object, but if you're a bit lazy or just want to have all the colors in the rainbow, you can press random. This setting is basically the same uh, way you would work in the um, solid mode. It will apply a different hue to any object on an object level of your of your scene. So that way you know exactly um, which uh, objects are different from each other. If they are part of the same object, then uh, they will have the same color. So that is already pretty great. It, like this feature was like all over internet, people were crazy. It's like, oh my gosh, we finally have it because it's it's been um, requested for so many years. And now it really fits into inside Blender because we already have different colors for the solid mode. So in the wireframe, it's just natural that it would uh, come. So this is just great. But you know what's great? Greater is that the Gris Pencil team took it as a challenge. So the Gris Pencil um, developers took it like, okay, we can have Gris Pencil as a final render, right? We can also have as a solid mode, and then let's join the wireframe party with the same settings. Just just try to make it as close as possible with regular meshes. So the um, wireframe mode will show it with the theme color. Then you can change this color if you. Um, select instead of single object, then in the object settings, when you select this object, which by the way, just breaking news, you can now select the Chris Pencil objects by just clicking on them. If you've been using Chris Pencil until now, you will notice that it was only possible to select them via the outliner or via the center of the object. Now you can just click anywhere in the object and it will just work. Then you can change the settings from um, the color settings from the same place as the regular objects from the object properties viewport display. So there is really no difference between having a regular mesh and a Chris Pencil object anymore. Although they really took uh, special attention for adding that extra level of uh, amazingness. Is that a word? No? Okay. 
random. The random mode for Grace Pencil objects not only takes the uh, objects themselves into account, but also the layers within. So that way you can tell, for example, in this character, there is a layer for the outlines of the face and then the, um, the, the beard and then the rest of the body. Which, by the way, doesn't it look like Ton a little bit? And he has a <laughs> Blender-ish logo there. Maybe it's a uh, yeah, Easter egg. Anyway, the um, random mode is uh, much more powerful in the um, the Chris Pencil objects. So that is also already really great. But they took it another level further, and they work on also supporting the regular colors for solid uh, mode. So for example, you can have single color, which will help you to see the silhouette of your characters in the entire, um, in all of the objects at the same time. So you can quickly just assign a color to anything, just quickly tell them uh, from the background. But what if you wanna do it on an object level? Well, you can also have that. And that is super handy when, for example, the objects, the characters overlap, and you want to see if the silhouette is, is nice, it reads properly on, on an object level. So that is already pretty great. And also the random, the random mode is supported in solid mode now for Gris Pencil, and it will be like a mix of the, um, the random for the wires and the random for the objects. So you can even have an extra layer of randomness. So it doesn't get more random than that. It just works. The, um, uh, another thing that changed for the Grace Pencil is that now for when you are in solid mode or wireframe, it would not render the effects. So that way you can work faster and the effects will be shown just like in EV or in, in cycles when you're actually on the render mode or um, in this case for the look dev mode. So these two little balls up here. So isn't that great? Fantastic, all these new things that are coming up with the, with the Chris Pencil is just becoming one uh, first-class citizen in the rest of Blender. So, of course, this works with the rest of the objects. If you have an object, um, it will just, just, just work. You have 3D objects, 2D objects, um, the, the solid uh, lighting, flat, studio, matcap still affects the regular objects, but it doesn't affect, of course, Chris Pencil it wouldn't make sense because it's 2D. And the single color, the material, the object, and the random color, they are also, um, um, they are respected. So it's just one big family of objects. Great news for all the 2D animators, 3D animators, 5D animators out there. Want to play with it? Go and check out the, I, I will leave a, a link in the description, but you can find it on the Blender Cloud. And it's also free. You don't have to be a Blender Cloud member. You don't have to be even logged in. You can just click on download and it's totally public for you to share, to do whatever you want. The software, well, of course, you can go to builder.blend, blender.org slash experimental. It's like a shortcut, like a quick redirect. I will link a, leave a link in the description as well, but you can, yes, go download your Blender, the latest Blender version the, of 2.8 beta, download the file, and both are free, free files, free software. Like, do you even do you want some fries with that? <laughs> if you can afford it, though, there's always ways you can he help uh, making Blender better by joining the Blender Development Fund with any of the options that you have here. Even for as little as five euro or six dollars per month, you are helping Blender getting better, getting more stable, and and just getting awesomer and also making the 2.8 release closer, which we hope is gonna get out as soon as possible. But yes, for now, we're using it in production here at the studio, so it, it is getting a, getting better every day, pretty much. So stay tuned for more, and uh, it's been fun to share any big news with you. So I'll see you, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Ciao.